Hello friends, welcome once again to yet another episode of Pause Talk. And today we have amazing Dr. Sonika Sethi and she is joining uh, from Ambala. It is a great, great pleasure, Sonika, to have you on this show. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Monica Ji. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me. So Sonika is a associate professor of English and she is also an author, a poet, a blogger, an editor and also a columnist. I will request now her to share about herself. All right. Thank you. At the onset, let me say a quick good evening to all the listeners or people who have joined us for this meet. Um, Monica Ji, uh, we came in contact with each other through the post that you shared on Facebook and I sort of uh, felt that I had a connect with you. Uh, see, I have been, um, I have had a presence on social media for a while now because I have been writing books. I have been into creative writing. Of course, I have been into teaching for the last 20 years. Teaching has been my profession. But of course, it all happened after I took a pause in my life. And the pause led me to my profession and then it led me to my passion. My journey has been a very passionate one, in fact. And uh, for the last five years, I've been into creative writing. I've been writing stories. I've been writing columns for okay. newspapers. I've been writing blogs um, on uh, various websites. Um, I have been writing poetry. I have been editing a magazine. So this has been a, a continuous journey for me. Last five years, I've been on a roller coaster ride. Amazing. Amazing. So this is, this actually proves that the pen is mightier than the sword. Like her pen is just overflowing and overflowing. And I'm sure it has really, really impacted lives of so many people. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Yeah. So I would now, uh, just as you've already told that you had a kind of a pause because of your in somewhere in profession. But before we talk about the pause, pause, let us also understand how your professional life began. Right. Now, this is a very interesting <laughs> topic because I love to say these things. Um, see, uh, in 1999, I uh, completed my graduation. And uh, surprisingly, my graduation was in Ayurvedic medicine. I did BAMS, right? It's a five-year degree course. I had to slog in, uh, in hospitals and I had to check patients. I had to read all the manuals related to medicine. And uh, when I got, same year, I got married also. Incidentally, at that point of time, it didn't occur to me that the kind of job my husband was into, my husband is a chief engineer in ONGC, and uh, his job is kind of on-off job. He goes into the sea for 15 days and then he gets an off when he comes back home for 15 day days, which are his completely off days. He doesn't have to work for those 15 days. So when I got married, I realized that oh, when my husband is at home for 15 days, I don't feel like going to work. Yeah. <laughs> professional discontinuity for me. And... Uh, uh, gradually when you settle down in married life you realize there are certain limitations to which uh, to your profession also my husband's job was transferable so I thought maybe okay well, once he moves to another station maybe we'll settle down there then I'll start working in the meantime I had my first child I conceived my first child and uh, I could not work because of my medical conditions I had to uh, take a break from my medical job. And uh, then I, when I had my child, my health was quite uh, not fit to go back to my job. And then my child was also quite a handful. You could raise four children. <laughs> and <laughs> you could equate her to those four children. She was quite handful. Maybe the our situation was like that because my husband would be away for 15 days. Yes, yes clingy towards me and mm. the time when I decided to ultimately quit my medical profession I decided mm. to hang up my white coat for good mm. and I started enjoying my housewife status now the heart was fine that you are doing it for your family you are doing it for your child but my soul was somewhere not satisfied mm. I 
resist when anything came my way and I felt, no, how can I sit all these years and do nothing? Mm -hmm. I mean, my... Uh, uh, have I been sent on earth only for this thing? How is it possible? <laughs> I yes. offer to the world. Why sit at home? Okay, fine. Okay, let's sit at home, but continue to do something, Sonika. Yes. Other yes. Right. My mother, she's the greatest motivator in my life. She has been my guiding beacon throughout. And that was when she came up with this idea ki it's been almost two years you've been sitting home. University ke na distance education ke forms nikle hai me English ke. Huh. In those forms, aise shock ke liye kar lo, abhi bhi tu you're sitting home and reading novels only. Right. Don't you read a couple of more novels and uh, sit for exams for me English. I took it up as a fun kind of a thing. Okay, I'll see, I'll see what I can do. And when I actually appeared for the first year exams, I took up the syllabus for the first year MA English exams one month prior to the exams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is not possible for you to clear the exams because people have been preparing for it for throughout the year. You yeah. want to clear them. I said, mm. oh, give it a try. Mm. And to my daughter was a handful. So uh, the only time I used to rest throughout the day was from 12 midnight to 7 in the morning when she would sleep for continuous 7 hours. Mm -hmm. Now I uh, imagined the entire scenario and I decided that this is the only time I can deprive myself of my sleep and put in to do something extra. Mm -hmm. And here comes my mother-in-law as my savior. Mm -hmm. I tell her, Ki, Mama, you know, I am not an early riser. You are one. Please, can you do this for me? Can you please wake me up at 4 a.m. in the morning? I'll study for those three hours when my daughter would be asleep. Now, my mother-in-law, she would come up from the ground floor to the first floor, knock at my door so lightly as not to wake my child, but to wake me up. And when I would open the door to tell her, Mama, I'm awake, she would hand me a cup of tea along with a small bite and I would mm. sit for three hours and study. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> uh, it's not, uh, I somehow feel that if women don't help each other, then nobody can help each other. And I have Excellent. seen women power in my life. Amazing, amazing. And so, I, yeah. I did wonders when <laughs> the result came. I broke all university records. I topped the university. <laughs> the first position holder and the second position holder was so much that they could not cover it even in the second year. Oh my God. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So that is how your journey on to become a professor in the college started, I'm sure. So yeah, uh, now that we know about your profession and how you had, uh, you have a double doctor. I was telling the other day when we had an intro that uh, this is one uh, woman I have met who has a double doctor, like a medical doctor and a doctorate uh, here also. So this is so wonderful, Sonika. And, and now let us understand about the pause. Yeah, the greatest pause that you believe that those years when you were doing nothing and you reflected and you thought. So let us get into that. Uh, how you can really tell the woman here that that pause is okay. Because that pause gives you that reflection and because of that reflection, you were able to really take that one stand for yourself or you can empower yourself or you can even go back and upskill and update yourself so that when you are out of that pause, you can just restart and unleash yourself. So yeah, please tell us about that. You know, I teach so many girl students. I mean, it's a co-ed uh, college where I teach, but... I have a lot of girl students and I always motivate them saying, if I can study with two kids, you have no liability as such. You can study much more than me and become so much better than me. See, uh, as I told you, I was doing my uh, post-graduation through distance education. I did not attend college or any university classes also. I studied on my own. For two mm. years, I studied on my own. 
I was a gold medalist in post graduation, but by the time I finished my post graduation, I was carrying my second child. So another year I had to spend at home before I went into the professional life. And because I spent that one year at home and because I had a degree through distance education, I was not getting any job offers, frankly mm -hmm. speaking. So the first job offer that came my way, I mentioned this to you the other day also, and I yes. love to mention this fact that never let go any opportunity that knocks at your door. Absolutely. I got a job offer to teach in a private institution, 100 rupees per lecture. Hmm. My hmm. family was so rupees ke liye tum wahan padhane jaogi. Huh. It's peanuts, hundred rupees per month. Uh, sorry, per lecture. Per yeah. I said no. This is opportunity knocking at my door. Let hmm. people that I can teach. Let people know about my caliber. Let me go. Hmm. And for two hours, I would leave my children with my mother-in-law. She would handle them. I would go and teach for two hours. I would earn 200 rupees per day. <laughs> and uh, since I had that stint with a private institution, I applied in a couple of colleges for part-time lecturer jobs. Hmm. Uh, because I had a good background, they selected me. And the first job that I got in a college as an assistant professor was at 4,000 rupees per month. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I look at it, my one day salary is much beyond what I earned for one month. Yes, yes. One month. But I never complained. I never complained to anybody that my workload is extra. Being a part time lecturer, I was sometimes asked to share the workload of other teachers That's also. Right. Yes, yeah, that is the norm. Yeah. You know, there is a bit of exploitation also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was no experience certificate for that period hmm. because I was a part-time lecturer so hmm. I uh, but I never grumbled about it I said okay this is maybe preparing me for something better something big something big also better and big big and better and <laughs> yes that's what exactly happened the permanent job right now which I am into I had no connections anywhere and hmm. I was Rejected. I mean, I was not rejected. Every time the panel would say, oh, we are looking for a candidate like you. But mm -hmm. when the results would be out, I would be in the panel, but I would not be selected because yeah. I had connections. And mm -hmm. this last interview where I appeared, my husband said, why do you go to all these interviews? They don't select you. You don't have any connections. Mm -hmm. I said, let be. They won't select me. They'll not select me in a college. I'll go and take a job in a school. But mm. I would not be disappointed. I would not be disheartened. Let me try at least. Yes, yes. And this time, I my I really get goosebumps when I think of it. The panelists, mm. two panelists, they put their um, foot, foot down. down. Yeah, yeah. She is a meritorious girl. She has no connections. Every time we keep it, uh, keep her in the panel, this time we won't sign at any other uh, candidate's name until you put her in the selected candidates list. Superb, superb. <laughs> yes, so that, that really shows that when we don't give up and we are so focused on our goals, we will get it. That is the lesson for so many youngsters also that they cannot just give up on first attempt we have to go on and on and on to go and on we will on. get it we will get it so i took a pause of four years before i embarked on my professional journey hmm. i had to stay at home for four years get my two kids uh, on this planet and then i thought okay now let me take up a profession it's not a full-time profession vis-a-vis -vis the medical profession that i was into so I thought mm -hmm. it's a comfortable profession. I will go after sending my kids to the school and I will come along with, uh, come back home along with them. So it's a comfortable profession. It's a win-win situation for my kids as well as for me. Yes. And profession really suited me. Mm -hmm. Because teachers yes. in my blood, both my parents were teachers. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so. professor of mathematics. Okay. And father was a lecturer of economics. Wow. Teaching Amazing. My blood. 
<laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is why you are so proficient now. And uh, tell us also about the the creative writing. That how did you uh, start do, doing that, and what was the opportunity that you got, and your flair for writing uh, just uh, took off. Right. So it happened that once I got a permanent job in a college, life again became slightly complacent for me. I uh, would teach in college, come back home, pay attention to my kids, look at my family. We live in a joint family, so we have some family obligations also. So everything again became uh, uh, like a cyclical process for me. Get up, go to college, come back home, raise kids, that's it. Somewhere deep down, again, there was this lurking uh, feeling that, no, this is not the be end and end all of me. I have something else to achieve. I cannot end up being a professor only. So I would write uh, whenever my kids had these competitions in school. And uh, if I could not prepare, uh, get them some poem or story from anywhere on the internet or through books, I would write those stories for them. I would write speeches for them. I would write poems for them. And my children would come home bringing laurels and their teachers would appreciate them. But we never thought it never came into my mind. Oh, I'm the force behind all this. Yeah. I'm giving something to speak. Yes. Never came to my mind. But once my children uh, reached that comfortable state where they needed me lesser and lesser day by day, I thought, why not I put my energy somewhere? I channelize my energy because my kids are no longer that dependent on me. Yes, yes. So let me channelize my energy somewhere. And at that point of time, somehow, I had by that time, I had lost my father for about eight to nine years. And one day, it suddenly came to my mind, oh God, I miss my father so much. Mm. Had he he would have guided me definitely what to do next in my life? Mm. How to my life all the more better and bigger? Mm. Uh, then I thought, okay, let me write a story about my father. And I started writing a story about him. And then there was a period uh, story going on in my mind. Uh, I did my, while I was in job and I was taking care of my kids, I completed my doctorate also. Okay. I did my MPhil. I did my PhD in English. I did a research project from UGC. I was doing a lot, but that was all part of academic career. Yeah. So I uh, wrote, started writing a story about my father and uh, it was still unfinished when one day I took it hesitatingly to my husband and I said, would you please read this for me? Okay. And he said, kisne likhi hai ye? Should I complete it? Hmm. My face and he said, Ye sach mein tumne likhi hai. <laughs> he said, you must continue writing. This is really good. You must write. And hmm. and I actually started writing stories and wow. It was my first collection of short stories. It Super. is Gulmohars and Kanehirs. Yeah. It carries this semi autobiographical story of my father titled Hazaro Kwahishre Aisi. Hmm. So, this book Beautiful. has 20 short stories. Beautiful. A literary, creative journey. I, wonderful. I can just relate to that also because. Uh, even I was very, very close to my father and uh, his uh, his demise actually changed my whole life, my whole perspective of life, everything. I can share a, a, a small uh, a poem which I had written uh, actually for my father. As you have written a story, I didn't write the story, but at least I wrote a poem because I'm more inclined to writing poems. So I keep writing poems and Hindi ke shayra, shayra, shayri bhi likhti hu, Hindi ke poems bhi likhti hu. So... Uh, he had like I was very young when he taught me how to drive the car. Like wow. I started driving at the age of sixteen itself without a license nahi tha, but to Haryana me license ban jata tha. I'm from Haryana, Faridabad, so license fada fad ban jata tha. <laughs> I started driving at seventeen. <laughs> yeah, so even I started at sixteen, and uh, so but then the poetry came that you the last the crux was that that 
you taught me how to drive the car no you also taught me how to drive my life so thank you for teaching me how to drive yeah so this was the crux so this is our parents are our foundation and how we also become that kind of a foundation is what we have to strive for that are we the same foundation uh, the way our parents was yeah yes. so that is uh, beautifully have you uh, um, this is the best gratitude we can give to our parents when we remember them fondly and we we take that legacy forward and uh, we we really bring out their essence through us so this yes. is a very beautiful thing to, uh, to say uh, sonika very good yeah so uh, this is the pause which you have taken so what i can again feel and i can share with the audience is that the pause that she has taken is not a pause which she wasted just regretting and grumbling as she has mentioned her pause was very very important for her because she was updating and upskilling herself reading novels got her a phd <laughs> in english and here she became a lecturer and then she became a professor and now she is uh, uh, mentoring so many uh, students for doing so many things and she is an editor and she is writing i have read a few of her uh, stories in the uh, times of india where she was there I, from your linkedin profile i was just bought, uh, seeing those and those are beautiful stories even the uh, even your caption the heading itself is so captivating that you really want to read that story so i must appreciate uh, so much for that very beautiful and really very very creative thank you so much for having this flair because lot of people will not read that nowadays no they just don't want to have that kind of a reading everything they want to listen 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 reading is one thing which we really want to inculcate in the children because that makes the connect more with the author with the story with the characters you really connect when you read yeah so this is wonderful sonika has already uh, written eight books she has just shown one but she has written eight books so you can go back and you can check on amazon for her books uh, for her literary skills and uh, she is amazing so now coming to the post pause so sonika that okay you had a pause you upskill yourself everything went well and we can see uh, also that what has happened after but still i want to hear from you that post the pause uh when the pause finished and you had uh, just unleash yourself how has it been now like your parents your uh, your in-laws and your children and you as a person how you have evolved so see first thing is uh, i made sure that my both my daughters were absolutely independent i never told them to study hard i never grumbled about their grades because at the point of time when they were studying i was also simultaneously studying and upgrading myself so i would tell them ki dekho beta ye meri padhai hai wo aapki padhai hai jo jo meri padhai ke number aayenge wo mere hain jo aapki padhai ke number aayenge wo aapke hain aap to bhi laoge main aapke paper par sign kar dungi i would not say a word to you par aap pehle zero lao to sahi hm and this motivated them so much they would see that their mother is sitting and reading for hours and hours studying they never went wayward i have two daughters i um, mean my elder daughter is right now pursuing her masters in engineering uh, from usa and uh, my younger daughter as we talked yesterday day before yesterday she is doing her law at nalsar and mm -hmm. uh, she uh, cracked the clat and she was among the toppers and uh, she was interviewed by so many journalists and I, my picture was along with her in the newspaper <laughs> recognition from there yeah and please tell mothers don't fuss over their grades and always show them by example yes we have to lead by example absolutely so many uh, parents they come to me ma'am batao hum apne bacche mein reading habit kaise develop kare padhte nahi hai i said aap kitna padhte ho show me how yeah. much do you absolutely read. absolutely and then they would say ki main chahti hu mera bachcha na aisi books padhe educative books padhe science se related books padhe autobiographies padhe i said wo padhna chhod dega <laughs> read jisme uska interest hai yeah Let they have to discover yeah they have to discover themselves yes children once decide for themselves okay this is what i like and then they would read like uh, they would take to books like fish to water so absolutely decide don't 
इम्पोज अपॉन दैम कि ये पढ़ना है और ये नहीं पढ़ना है बिकॉज नो नॉट हार्मफुल नॉलेज absolutely absolutely yeah i absolutely agree with you totally agree with you sonika that we cannot and should not uh, impose anything on our children as a parenting coach also i can say that when we are raising our children it is we are not raising a, a, a template that this is because the society norms are said the society says that this is the good books and these are the this we have to do that so it is like we are nurturing a plant no the plants the shoots will go here and there but yes. they will they are there they are living they are surviving and they are thriving whatever is good for them they will do it we are there to just guide them and not to be uh, able to impose and be in an authoritarian parent and just impose our all of everything on that so very nice you have raised your children very nice i must appreciate that yes so uh, i have two daughters they value what i have achieved because they've seen me start from the scratch Hmm. they have witness to my journey i mean recently when uh, times of india accepted me as a dedicated blogger for their website now i write a dedicated blog for them fireflies in the jar and when i mentioned this fact to them so they were like mama we are very proud of you and that was the best thing i could hear from my children Excellent. of course parents tell this to their children we are so proud of you beta but when a child says we are so proud of you <laughs> sense of achievement yeah. absolutely so amazing I took a pause and i then started uh, my creative writing journey i have been now writing for 5 years i have written short stories my solo poetry collection will be out in another one week and uh, i'm really excited about it that will be my ninth book in a um, in my creative journey and uh, when i finished my first collection of short stories then i started writing columns for hindustan times mm-hmm. there's a column in hindustan times called spice of life mm-hmm. so that writing for uh, that column i started sending to the editor my uh, pieces and nobody was known to me even the editor of hindustan times i never knew him i just mailed him my pieces and they were accepted they were published and so many started uh, you know hindustan uh, times they have this uh, uh, attribute that they mention your email id under your piece so you okay. start getting emails out of it you know uh, okay feedback yeah writing back to you oh we read your piece it was really wonderful i've shared it with my children i've shared it with my family so that was kind of quite exciting i, I mean that was the payback time probably uh, i was getting the rewards for my hard work and hindustan yes. brought me into column writing hmm and then um, it so happened that i sent one of my poems to a website on the occasion of women's day the poem was published and the publisher the director of that publishing house calls me first he writes me a mail that uh, ma'am i would like to have a word with you and then uh, when we exchange our numbers he calls me and says ma'am we would like you to write a dedicated blog for our website wow <laughs> the publishing house was based out of delhi i was a small time professor in ambala and he reaches out to me and says we like what you write and uh, would you like to do a regular uh, blog for our website that is how i started my first regular blog it is called spellbound by sonika wow yeah and then he, after two months he approaches me again and says ma'am i want to start a literary magazine and i want you to be the executive editor for our magazine superb <laughs> it's a huge moment for me but i made sure that being the executive editor of the magazine i encourage so many housewives hmm i see the potential i tell them you write anything you write send it to me i am the editor editing is my uh, job i'll if I, if your story if your piece touches my heart i'll edit it hmm sometimes i uh, actually do the cosmetic surgery of the piece <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But the 
Yes, but the way they would be encouraged, that would be amazing because somebody getting their one piece published will be a big, big thing for that one person. I know. So, really encouraging women to give, you're giving them voice actually. This is how you are giving them voice by helping them because there are so many people who really want to write and I, I encourage journaling. I'm not an editor, so I cannot tell them to <laughs> send anything, but I can really tell them to journal. So uh, I also journal uh, very frequent, very, very often. And uh, I also do that. And I'm also encouraging in my mindfulness sessions, I encourage them to journal so that they're able to bring out what is inside them. So we really need to give that voice to uh, the people around us. So See, that's that really is I have learned from my own experience. Most of the times when I, uh, there was one group, I joined a kitty party once upon a time. And every time the ladies would sit around, they would gossip about uh, either their mother-in-laws, their maids or their sister-in-laws. And I would sit in a corner and, and wonder, I don't have a sister-in-law. The maid is doing fine. My mother-in-law is like a mother to me. What should I, what am I doing here sitting and wasting my time? And I uh, tell everyone that it's not because I am good that we are living in a joint family for 25 years. It's because my mother-in-law is good that we are living in uh, together for 25 years. Because Absolutely. she has never been a mother-in-law to me. She has... Hmm always more than uh, she has always been more than a mother to me hmm. if every my i when i launched my second book uh, my mother in law started weeping in the audience and i said to everyone sitting there i said if any girl is sitting in the audience and she is here to support me i would like to bless them with one thing that i know and that is May you get a mother-in-law like mine. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you mother-in-law like I have, you'll never face any difficulty in life. She'll be standing like a rock in front of you. Then come to my daughter-in-law. Yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing. Superb. That is so wonderful, Sonika. I'm really, really happy to have you here. And we had a beautiful conversation. I would now, now request you to give a small message which is kind of a takeaway from your journey of pause to the audience who was listening to this conversation. Yeah, so I have two messages to uh, convey, though I, I have I am yet to achieve much more, but still I feel at this point of time, I can send out two positive messages to all the women out there. A, if you see an opportunity, never close the door to it. Hmm. Even if it's just a foothold, try to mm. stick your foot there and fight for what you can achieve. Mm. Never think ki isme paisa nahi hai, isme name nahi hai. If you're getting an opportunity, please grab it with both hands. Never so this is one message which I have learned from my personal experience. The second message that I have learned from my family's experiences where women stand for each other Nobody, no man, no woman outside the periphery of your four the, the of your home can ever pull you down. So Absolutely, stand together for each other. Women Absolutely. must support each other. Absolutely, absolutely agree on that. That we need to be together. We need to break that myth. When uh, older people used to say ki. Uh, we have to break that myth. It is, it is now that it is a woman who is the best friend of a woman. And she is the one who is behind you. Though there is, uh, before we can say, no, uh, behind every man, a successful man, there is a woman. Now I can say that behind every successful woman also is there a woman. I mean, so with every successful woman, the man has to stand beside her. Yes, not behind her. <laughs> we will have to learn to stand beside, beside her. Actually, very well said. Very well said. Thank you so much, Sonika. It's a lot of learning from what you've shared. And your life itself is a big learning for so many people. Thank you so much for taking out your time and being with us. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste.
Monica, Monica ji, the pleasure was all mine and I have loved talking to you. I hope that this kind of interaction continues. Uh, let's make many more memories together. And Absolutely. All the best for your upcoming book. And uh, I would love to share. Uh, and I would also like to tell uh, um, women out there that in case any one of them wants to reach out to me, my Facebook account is always public. I never block or I, I never keep it locked because I am for everyone to see what are my achievements. And yes. so they can email me, they can contact me through Instagram also. And I personally respond to each and every person who tries to reach out to me. So thank you so much. Thank you. Kind of help ever wanted from my side absolutely absolutely so yes women whoever has seen this uh, conversation and want to be the guest here the next guest who can really inspire so many other women here so you can just reach out you can dm me and i will contact you and you can be here another person who is really inspiring so many women out there thank you so much namaste thank you monica ji mm -hmm.